So I was going to ask you, so it's our first time, it's our second time back together since our little, our little hiatus. And so what has been going on in your, my life's all been the same shit, but how, what has been going on in your life? Uh, a little bit of travel. Um, uh, taking in some concerts. I have a bit of sad news to report. Unfortunately, my little baby kitty cat cubby, our 20 pound little baby, yeah. um, yeah. Um, he, we had to put him down about a month and a half ago. So he was with us for 15 years and, you know, that was a tough time. It's hard to watch an animal, and even a human being, anybody that you love, you know, yeah. get old. And, um, so it was just time. And, and what we have been doing was I had been giving him fluids Oh, wow. you know, to keep him going. And we were, he was on medicine and fluids and I was doing fluids every other day. Um, and you know what that's like being a nurse. I mean, I was literally, you know, yeah. <laughs> our, our home, our, our bedroom was really equipped to care for him. That's where he was. And yeah. so, um, you know, that day comes and you're like, I, I was resolved because my little guy is sick and he, you know, he, there's no reason to keep living in pain and discomfort so yeah that was a tough one yeah putting an animal down is never easy i've done it uh three times it's not easy over the years four times over the years not easy um it's just it's but it's like it's the it's the most humane thing you can do at some point right for an animal when you see yes. them not getting better and it's and you're literally keeping them alive um, kind yes of right it's a tough yes. Decision. It's not easy. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's a human or a damn. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy. It is not. It's not easy. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> when, it is going to sound strange, when you sleep with a cat for 15 years, their absence is noticed, you know? So fortunately for me, we have Kima, our Siberian Husky, who's yes. been on the show before. She yes, had like an yes. appearance. Yes, yes. Now and again. <laughs> Yeah. Um, she has well been made up for missing <laughs> hubby in bed because yeah. it's a constant grind with her at my feet and she's 65 pounds folks. So, you know, and, but I wouldn't, I couldn't sleep without her. I have a hard time getting to sleep if I'm traveling and less and, oh, and Kima stay home. Yeah. Um, the first night is weird because I'm so used to being wrapped up around her. Oh, uh, hi. Okay. So, yeah. It's, you know. She met, it was funny to her reaction. She, when we came home out to Cubby, Kima went to the back slider and stood there and for a minute and waited. Cause that's where family comes in and out. A lot is from the, oh. from the backside of the house. So, and she looked back at us like, oh, okay. You know, he's not coming home. So she actually, she had her moment herself too. I believe it. And of course she went looking for him a little bit, but that moment that she realized he wasn't here and something was wrong and going to the back door waiting for him. Yeah. That was pretty amazing. It's one of those things where um if you're not an animal person, yeah. You won't get it on some level. You may you may get it psycho or you'll get it like you yeah. get it like if you have an animal, but psychologically you will not get it. It's really weird when they're, you know, I lost my Scrabble seven years ago, and I still think about them all the time. I mean, it's like it's just so weird. It's like you're you have them for oh, you have an animal for 15 years or longer, 10 years or longer, even three or four years or longer. You get they become part of your life. I mean, they're part of your routine, yes. feeding that you're feeding them, bathroom stuff, I mean, everything. Just before you travel, you think about where they what are going to do, how you're, it's a it's it they become it becomes very ingrained in your life. And I have friends who don't have animals and they just, they just, they don't, they have sympathy, but they don't get it. It still, right. still seems weird to them. It's an animal. Like, no, you don't understand. It's not, they're not just an animal. It's, like, it's not, not and no one's crazy. It's like people are being crazy. And like, no, it's like you get, you really get used to them and it's little things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so there was that. And um, otherwise, you know, the insurance industry. For our regular listeners, you know that I'm an insurance broker in Los Angeles, and it's crazy, crazy right now. 
I'm getting calls daily. People want lower auto rates. I'm getting calls daily. People are getting still getting non-renewed for their home insurance. People who own commercial property, it's becoming very, very challenging to get insurance. Like the whole state of insurance in California is topsy-turvy. Really? So my day is not, it's stressful, you know, beyond the normal, just natural yeah, stresses of running a business. Yeah. It's just stressful. So we've been dealing with that um, for like the last, significantly like the last eight months. Wow. Um, so it's been, it's, and I'm not complaining. Don't oh, no, of course not. misunderstand me, but I'm just letting you guys know out there you know, that 2024 isn't going to bring lower auto premium or home premium or open up the market. Um, we hope for stabilization. Yeah. So, you know, the rate increases stop. Yeah. Um, and hopefully by 2025, we can see some positive turns in the market. But so from my business perspective, it's been a rough year. Wow. It's been a rough year. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Well, you know, um, as folks may not know this, and you know, I've been let go by a cow. Um, and so I'm not, and to the, to the chagrin of the rest of the business, I do not have a podcast for insurance at the moment. I did not know that. I did not know that actually. I was let go and, um, and, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna be shady on here. Uh, I was gonna say, it was their mistake. But let me go, but that's another story. Um, because there's, there's nothing, there was nothing like it. There's nothing like it out there. Uh, insurance Journal has Insurance Journal, the number one, you know, the, the, the magazine of business, and occasionally I'll have conversations on audio here and there. But I know for a fact, and, and people contact me afterwards. Um, they know what I was doing was something very different. Um, that you know, having audio, having video and audio. And really highlighting, I love talking about the insurance business. I like to, I like to hear these kind of, I, I'm out of the loop now because I'm not in it at the moment. So I, I miss that part of it. They would tell me stuff and let me know what's going on and what they're doing to help people. And it's, I just want to say, it was a, I, I just want to say it was, a, it was like for three years, I, I, it was, it was, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Uh, to reunite with all my friends. Yes. Um, I'm, be, I'm still friends with many of them in the business and they've all expressed sadness that I'm not there and. Um, so I just wish them well, uh, even though I have some animosity, but that's another thing. Um, and, uh, but I wish them well. And I just, I mean, a lot of my friends in business, I hope they continue to be thrive and there's some great folks in the business and you too thrive and make it through. But yes, I, that's one of the major changes that happened. It was a, it was a successful show on my network and, um, you can catch them folks. You can still catch them. Independent voices. You can catch them. It's out there. Listen, it's on a couple episodes. You can catch them. But I, I made some friends off of that podcast. I really did. Speaking of conversations, like like Byron and all of them, I became I became friends with these newer people I never knew before, and um, and there are some amazing people in the industry all over California, and so it was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, and our longtime friend uh, David Benish retired. He so, did. Yeah, he did. So it was a major thing too. Uh, we're still friends. We're still family. We still talk. Um, and he retired, so I'm very happy for him that he's out. He did a he had a long standing search with the company and with the industry. Yes, I mean, was major, it like 30 years or something? Long like that. Years. 35 years. Because he said he That's came to California when it was I. Uh, so, so folks, a little something, a little on the weeds. It was uh, IBA West. No, it was IABC. Yes. It was IABC or something back then. It was like something totally different back then. Then it became IBA West. In the late '80s, that's when he came in. He said, "I I got here in '87." I was like, "That's your graduate high school. That's your graduate high school." So I guess he's like yeah. 30, like thirty, yeah, like thirty. So thirty-three years right? But yeah. he was there. He, said he got a job there, and then stayed the whole time. He was vice president of communications and marketing, and he was so good at his job, and um, and was just revered. And so I shout out to David Benish and all them, and him and and Bob Teshman, all them, everybody who retired this year. Shout out to all of them. They were yeah. people. It was wonderful. It's a great business. Just it's go back to this is this is our this is our connection. First is the insurance industry. You and me. Um, yes. So that you'll feel here's talk about insurance every once in a while, folks at home, because that's our connection. That's one of our connections we had. It's a great. I, I made some great friends. Great friends. But yeah. Yeah. Well, on. I'm sorry to hear that you. I'm sorry to hear that you um, won't be doing voices 
Um, nope. You never know how things can change, too. Exactly. So. Exactly. You just don't. I know. said I said never back when I left the when I left the industry in two thousand and nine. <laughs> you should never say never. I've learned that lesson, Melissa. Yes, never say never, folks. Never. Say never. You will learn to um, eat your words, maybe with yep. a little butter and jam, <laughs> but still, you got to eat your words. Yes, and so when it came back around to where I was podcasting, I'm like, oh, this is really funny. I am back in it again. So yeah, so never say never. And this is, and you're right, this situation, I have so many friends in the industry and things could change in a moment. You never know. So you never know. Back, folks, yeah. though. So all you folks asking about that show, check out the episodes. They're great. Like, they're, they're evergreen. Check them out. There's some great people we're talking to. Um, and But you never know. I might be back in it at some point. Who knows? In another capacity. You never know. <laughs> now that I'm kind of back in business almost full, stop now because yeah. of my mom's doing a little better. She's been sick recently, but she's a little better. Okay. Uh, but we're getting into okay. 2024. Yes. Ready for this year behind. 2024. James, 2024. I know. I know. It's we're crazy, we're right? We're turning 55. I mean, folks turning... out there, are, can you believe we're going into 2024? I know. Oh, well, it's James like... and I will be turning 55. Five. <laughs> throw that out there now I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means Plus, i don't even know what that means i mean it just means another year but i don't even know i mean that's i mean typically that's like now you're a senior citizen kind of thing that's kind of what typically it means but i mean i don't feel old i know you don't either no no i don't feel well sometimes my hip feels and my knee feels a little yeah. old but yeah. other than that my spirit is like a shiny 20 year old you know it's a <laughs> i feel i feel still connected to to my 20 year old soul i have a little bit too no so me too i mean i feel like i'm youthful in some ways but then i can tell i'm not as i i think differently than are well, you well i think that we are both much more well me more than you boring right because a a, a a night out to me is like work where when i was in my 20s a night out was just something we did that was just you know but now it's like oh i gotta get dressed i gotta do my hair um there's it's just work it's just more work yes so going out to concerts and being out really late is new was new for me i don't i don't stay out till two in the morning kidding me yeah i need need my beauty rest for me concerts i need a chair yeah i need to be able to stand up and sit down i can't be stand up for three hours straight that that, that, that's yeah yeah i do i do need breaks i can still stand and dance, but I do need, need to take a sit breaks. Yes, that's, that's what I mean. Exactly, that's what I mean. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's true. I'm taking yeah. my daughter to see Madonna um, in <gasps> March. For I think is she at? Yeah, yes, we're gonna go. We're gonna go at the Kia Forum also, where you went and saw. So she, yes. I forgot she likes Madonna also. And all these years, I've seen Madonna like nine times. I've never taken her, and I was like. That's right. I've never. I keep getting you like Madonna, so it's her greatest hits tour. I'm like, how perfect! And in my backyard, basically, in the forum. So we're going in March. Yes. Uh, I looked at the tickets. I would like to go too. I think. I think I'm. I think I will also go to the Madonna because, I mean, she's iconic for where we were in life at the time she came up. While we were, you know, in our teen, in our in our later teen years. Um, yes. But growing up with her music, I mean, she's an amazing businesswoman. You can say whatever you want about how she right. lives her life or whatever. It doesn't matter. An amazing businesswoman. And she always said, I'm not the best singer out there, but I will outperform anybody. And she did for many, many, many years. So a lot of respect. And I love her music. I mean, it's it's timeless. It's like, it's it's. The thing about her that I, you know, I, again, I always tell people, if you weren't around that time period, um, you have to realize this is the mid 80s, mid to late 80s, where it was her like big heyday. I mean, she was big, you know, she's lasted time, but her heyday, um, it was Reaganomics, it was Cold War, it was much more conservative than it is, well, you know, we're getting back there again, kind of, but it was a very conservative time period. Um, and it was a man's world. Yes. Uh, Prince, Michael Jackson, Bruce Springsteen, Tommy, they're all, they're huge. Yes. Then here comes Miss Madonna, 
First, she's keeping her baby. Then she's liking a prayer. <laughs> then she's justifying her love, whatever. But people don't understand that like, she was somebody who came out and said, and she was so young. And she was yes. like, I am a woman. We're going to celebrate it. I'll be whatever I want. Who cares what you think? And mm-hmm. she was huge. She was one of the, so it was 85, 85. It was 84, 85. She was the biggest star in the world. Like she was selling yeah. records every five seconds or something, like some weird shit like that. Yeah. Um, and I was saying, so for us, we remember that. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, we were we were teenagers. You know, we were already in high school. We were yeah. we were seeing it. I mean, I, I remember seeing the boy toy stuff at the stores and and the girls dressed yeah. like her in leather and lace and all that stuff. And I remember yeah. I remember all that. This is here in California, the Valley Girls. I mean, that was all big. Um, yeah. well, that totally. Um, and I was like, I totally. I mean, I. I'm not totally. I'm totally myself. Totally. I'm totally. sorry. What? What was that? Valley. Valley boy. What? Like, uh, like, oh my like, god! Like, like, totally. Oh, oh my god! 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 Um, I love it. Um, I was shopping at the. I was shopping at the at the, at the gallery in Sherwood Oaks. Yes. I was going there, going to Benetton mm-hmm. and all that. I was like, getting swatch watches. Yo, oh, God. Yeah. All right. You know, you know <laughs> wow, all that stuff, girl. You know all that stuff. You oh know my that god, stuff. that's a throwback. Yeah. Now and that ga- no that gallery yeah. let's go to that Galleria for a second. That Galleria was everybody was going there. Everyone. Yeah. And Sherwood Oaks. I like everybody. Sherwood Oaks Gallery. Yeah. Okay. Everybody went there. Yeah. It was everybody. huge. Everybody. Everyone, everyone, whether you were cool or not, was at the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Yep. It was, it was that's where we went. That's where we shopped. That's where we hung out. That's where we met our girlfriends and boyfriends. And <laughs> mm-hmm. that was yeah. it. It's a shame that it's now a shell of itself. I mean, now it's like a lot of businesses are in there and stuff. It's like it's not the same as it yeah. was. It's interesting though. I was I um Phoebe, my oldest granddaughter, turned 13. Oh wow, okay. So I took her out for her birthday and we were talking and she was she said to me, um, because I said, Hey, do you have plans later today? She goes, Oh, I don't know. My best friend and I best friend and I might you know sometimes we just decide to just go out and do something like going to the mall the Topanga mall is our favorite thing and I'm like yeah. it's still a thing still a thing oh, it's a, a different mall, mall. yeah but it's a thing for young yeah. girls you know to want to go and boys hang out at the mall and oh, so yeah. I thought oh wow. I know what that's like <laughs> I, I do oh my god so I, I thought that was kind of a cool mall. I didn't say anything because yeah. I wanted you know to be about her, but I was like, wow, she goes to the mall. It's her favorite hangout spot. And uh, folks, Topanga Canyon Mall is huge. And I I, 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 I like that mall too. I like that mall. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I know. So yeah, so I just I just think yeah, back then it was, you know, Madonna was huge. It was a huge thing. And and so I always give her a reference for that. And she's she held her own against the boys. And she was also spoke out for women's rights and girls' rights and and human rights, and you know, and, and apparently on her tour, she highlights all that stuff on her tour. It's her greatest yeah. hits. So she has so many hits. I know. So How long do you think the show is going to be? I think like three hours, probably. Probably, right? It'd have to be. Because I'm thinking because um, with a Taylor Swift and Beyonce yeah. both had like three hour shows, and Madonna's been around longer than them. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, just think about it. I mean, just, and and Taylor, can you believe since we last talked? Taylor has once again become the biggest thing on earth. Yes. I don't yes. like her, but it's just, it's just funny how, I mean, I'm, I live in Inglewood, so I saw the Swifties yes. in my neighborhood. And she yeah. was here. It was weird seeing all these white girls in Inglewood. Um, that was kind of, it was kind of crazy. And they were just like, they're having a good old time. And I was like, oh yeah. But this, this chick, and it's all smart because she's also has Taylor's versions of her albums. It's like she's just the smartest thing on earth. Like she's just I mean, the fan. The girls are eating it up. Yes, and also that you turn your concert into a movie, so that you you bring in people who either couldn't go or people who went but wanted to really see her up close and personal. And watch the show as if they had a stage, you know, seat. Um, phenomenal business. Phenomenal marketing of, of business. And I hear it all because my granddaughter, my my two oldest granddaughters are Swifties. There you go. Yeah. So the 13-year-old and the 10-year-old, that's all they care about. 
Yes. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Oh, she's huge. She's, I mean, it's, it's just yeah. it's, the fact that she started re recording her album so she can own the masters. Yes. Um, and they're selling. And it's like, it's she's, and now the industry's like, no more of that. You know, like, you gotta wait at least like five years. What is they thinking of insurance and stuff? And like, they're trying to change the rules because her Taylor's mm -hmm. versions are sell outselling her regular versions. Um, the company she was at. I mean, they they did her wrong. So she like she was like, okay, I'm gonna take care of myself. I'm the fan. Yeah. She's doing extras and she's doing Beyonce too. Renaissance was huge. Oh my god! And now mm -hmm. she has a film out for for the concert. And they show yes. Taylor Swift and Beyonce together at each other's premieres. Top two I saw artists. Beyonce too. I was at the Beyonce concert. Oh, you saw Beyonce too? Oh, go on, girl. I did. I did. Amazing. I did. Les was with me at that one. Les went to see Beyonce. Les went to see. Les, yes, he did, and he Les enjoyed. Times it. went to see Beyonce. That yes. is crazy talk. Did he enjoy himself? He did. He did. He had a good time. Good. I and mean, it's such a great show. Yeah. You know, whether you're a a fan of the music or not a fan fan of the person, not a fan. It doesn't matter. When you go to a concert today, it's an amazing show. And so you can't deny having a good time because the production value itself is worth the price of the ticket. You know? And she's got great music. And she was yes. she's good live. Yeah. She came out, oh my God. And she did that before all the craziness started, she stood and sang. And oh. I was like, I forgot how beautiful her voice is and she was all deep i mean she was, so she was amazing and she and i was like i got chills listening to her sing live because i could hear her first of all it's very hard with all the music and you know going on to hear them sing i got to i got to hear her sing and she was so amazing i have got pictures too yes <laughs> Very good. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually impressed. I got chills. I got chills talking about it. I am impressed. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had so, a little bit of fun since we've been on our hiatus. Yes. You know, a mix. It's been a mixed bag for me. Yeah. So. Also, no same here. So uh, yeah. since I saw you, we I saw two musicals. So oh, cool. I think we talked about the one of them. I saw six. The one I, that, no, we didn't talk. I don't okay, remember. Okay, so my brother, to my brother, who's 50 years old, to his first stage experience. He had never seen a musical or a play or anything. Never been to the theater? No. Wow. No, but it's six is the musical for the wives of Henry VIII. It's a huge hit. It is so good. Pantages Theater. I uh, love the Pantages. I love Pantages. Great venue. Um, my brother loved it. He's a huge Henry VIII fan and all that, the tutors and all that. So he was like, You're right, James. It's really good. Like I said, no, it was really good. It was really, it was a, it was like a concert. Then a month later, I and mean, he didn't come with us. I went with my sister with Tony Moore, another guest of the show. Yes. It's Tony. So Tony, his best friend, me, my sister Sandra, my brother-in-law, went and saw Tina Turner the musical. And it happened to be the day Tina died. Oh no. I, this is the second time it's happened to me when we went to see Avenue Q. One of the main characters is Gary Coleman. We got through it the day Gary Coleman died. Oh, God. So it was like really interesting. So, what they do, they did the same thing here. They did the show. Then, afterwards, did the acknowledgement. But they had it on the wall. You know, we love Tina, and they did the whole thing on, on the wall when you walk in. But I would tell you, whoo, it was another good show. They didn't shy away from the beatings, they didn't shy away from the abuse. Uh, oh. They did, though, they did not shy. I mean, you, the first two minutes, the father slaps the mother, and you're like, you hear the audience go, Ooh, at the same time. Before you get to the first song, but that's her story. I mean, her story's about overcoming. So the story's about her from birth to when she becomes big with um, what's love got to do with it. It stops like right there. Okay. It's, like, it's 85. It's like right there. Again, our teenage years. When she came back, yes. it was like. I remember the video. I loved her yep. video. Yep. We're walking on Jamie Fence, her big hair. Yep. Um, we were in high school. That's then. right. Um, it still stops there. So, and, and it's just. All her hit, a reimagining. It was so at Pantages again. So we love that. My brother and I are going to see MJ the musical in January at the Pantages. Michael Jackson. Oh, how fun! Oh, uh, very exciting. We both love Michael Jackson, so I heard it's really good. So we're yeah. excited about that. So I saw a couple of shows. I didn't do concerts, but I saw shows, and they both were musicals. So they were very good. Mm -hmm. They were very very good. Uh, Tony went and saw Moulin Rouge there, 
And he said, it was oh, really how was it? He said it was really good. Yeah. Oh, the movie. So I was like, I don't know. I didn't, you know. But he said, no, he said it was really good. So I like, so I saw two, I saw, you saw two cops. I saw two, I saw two musicals. Uh, yes. I realized how much, I, I was reminded about you, but I was reminded how much I like going to the theater. I like getting out and seeing live stuff. Yes, I do too. And I, you forget until you go out and do it, how much fun it is. I will say that um, going back to the forum is a little nostalgic too, because I, we would go to the basketball and the hockey games at the forum and grew up grew up doing that and to see it now having been to SoFi oh yes and seeing two concerts at SoFi and then going to the Kia to see Stevie Nicks this past weekend um I like a smaller venue but that's probably me as a person though like I felt that you're it's more intimate um I felt that the sound I could hear her where I had a very hard time hearing Beyonce and Taylor sing. Okay. And um, so I could hear her more. And I was looking around going, oh my God, I was a teenager when I was here yep. <laughs> last. I mean, Remember? Yep. I saw Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's retirement game where they drove a Rolls Royce onto the court and gave him a Rolls Royce before the game. That's dating myself. It was an amazing basketball yeah. game too, but I was there for that. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, that's why Inglewood is a city of champions, folks, because of the uh, there was a three peat that the Lakers did in the champions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I grew up in I grew up in all that. I mean, and it's funny for me because I live right there to see that whole area. On the it's because basically what's separating me from the stadiums is the cemetery. So on the other side of the cemetery is where it all begins. And now we have Intuit Stadium. We have the YouTube cha- uh, uh, theater. Um, then they have uh, Hollywood Park because we just moved over to the other side. I guess that whole right. prairie, all that's just, it's just very different now. Inglewood is just changing. My Street Florence is changing. There's a lot of stuff happening. We have a train now and everything. Um, it's just, for me, I moved to, I moved to Inglewood in 1978. Um, I was, I had just turned nine, um, and I was finishing up, I finished up third grade back in LA. We were still going to the old school, finishing it up, but I started fourth grade in Inglewood. And so it's to me, and that's over 40 years ago. So it's kind of like, it's funny to see it. It's just, it's changing. I mean, I, you, you move somewhere, you have no, I mean, you don't always stay in the same area. You start, I mean, I've left, but I've left and come back. So interesting, but to come back and be here and see it all just before my eyes, it's, it's becoming a different city. Well, what, tell me, what is one different thing that you like? Train. The train is train. <laughs> Transportation, yeah. It's changing. And it's funny because we were one of the only major cities that didn't have public transportation that was easy to the airport. Right. You know what I mean? It's like San Francisco, Chicago, they all have it. We were still like, you think of flyaway. I was like, why can't you just have a train that'll take you right mm-hmm. there? And so it's, and it's right now it's a mess at the airport because they're, they're still, they're building the people. It's, it's crazy over there. But I know once it's all done, it's going to be wonderful because LAX yeah. is one of the worst airports to fly into, actually, um, for what, for a major city. This is not easy to get. It's, it's just, it's, it's screwy. Um, but I'm liking that. And I also like, I actually like that more people are starting to come here again and spend money here. Uh, we're our own city. We're a city within Los Angeles. Folks are like, what is Inglewood? But we're, we're part of Los Angeles, but we're not part. We have our own mayor, our own stuff. Um, they're starting to recognize some of our local places are really good. Um, and it's changing the perception of Inglewood. Like we're, we're part of South Central, um, but now they say more South LA now. Um, because we're over here, we're, we're near the beaches, we're near the freeways, we're near the airport. Like, I'm really, I mean, I love the, the weather down here, like, it's really a nice area, but it was dangerous when I was growing up here. It was very, it was gang infested and dangerous and all that, and I survived a lot. But now I like that it's changing, that yeah. people are, are changing. I'm hoping one thing, I'm hoping they don't strip too much gentrification here, is the only thing I'm a little worried about. Let's keep some of the Local stuff. I saw it happen in San Francisco. I don't want to see it happen here. Still keep some of the the the, the culture here, um, but it's just making it so it's inclusive of everybody. So everybody comes right. here. We're just all living together, making a making a profitable city. Just making something that 
It'd be fun to live here. So I'm kind of, I go to some of the town meetings and stuff. I'm always watching what's going on and the climate and who's moving in and who's moving out. And I'm watching all that. I know things are going to change. I mean, things just, that's how evolution works. But I'm hoping yeah. we can keep some of the, you know, some of the culture here. Because it's, it's, a, it's a cool city and we're near everything. We're near a lot of stuff. We're near everything. So. Yeah, I think the culture in Chatsworth is definitely changing, but we do still have horse land, <coughs> horse property here is our major political concern is losing the land to developers because most of it is being sold off and built. I mean, I you know, we've got four or five new housing tracks and a very small footprint. So, you know, we're seeing changes here. Um, and I just... I hope that it doesn't lose its small town feel here at the very, very Northwest end of the San Fernando Valley, because that's what keeps me in Chatsworth. You know, I can be in a, in a large city and, and have all the benefits of that. But when I come home, I feel like I'm pretty secluded, close to the mountains, quiet little, you know, town where everyone knows each other. So. No, there's something, yeah. there's something about that. No, and I, you know, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a horse a horse girl. I love. I mean, I know that in like my family that's in Rancho Cucamonga and Redlands over there, which is yeah. not far, not near here, folks at home. It's, it's like eastern part of LA County. Um, there are fights for that too because there was horse land, there was ranches over there. They yeah. want to build up Ontario. They want to these want to build up, and I so I always get nervous about that too for all you guys out there. It's like we just build up all of Southern California and that's it. Mm -hmm. we not have land. I mean, that's what they're going to do at my house. I have a lot of land. They want to tear down my house and build like two giant complexes on it. Yeah. The parking. Yeah, that are that have no curb appeal. Yeah. No, I mean, seriously, <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. No. So, yeah, we have, um, we still have land here, but I mean, it's, it's going, it's going fast. And these houses are being, these monstrous houses with no land are going up and it's like, okay, you know. We'll see what happens. Oh, because I was. Cause, my, I mean, we know what happens. They're going to take over. Everything will be built out, and um, I'm just hoping that it doesn't. It preserves its kind of small town feel, although there's like a gazillion people living here now. Well, I heard Santa Clarita's changing. How? I I don't know. My friends out there say it's not the small town feel starting to go away. See, that's what I worry about. So he said they, they moved out there for a reason, and it's yeah. like you know to raise kids or animals or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of raising animals. We don't want kids. We have animals. Um, it's it's. They said it's it's. They got these little houses. They're cute, and they weren't they weren't expensive when they got them. They goes, but now everybody's seeing. Here's an area we can come to, and almost like like my wife was saying, almost like invade. They're invading the area, and they're they're not. They're just changing it. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, we know out there a lot of filming goes on out there. That's why it was because yes. it, it, it was a lot of land. It was like filming. We said that's starting to change too. Wow. I know. So that's what's scary to me. I'm like, I don't, you know, between here, we're going to be one between us and Las Vegas and, and wherever we all just one big, you know, city at some point. Yeah. Speaking of Vegas, I was in Vegas visiting um, friends at, during Formula One okay. race. Thank God I left Saturday afternoon, not Sunday, because I had not known when I booked the travel with oh, F1. Didn't? Okay. No. That, heard that about was it. my bad. Yeah, I heard about it. So, uh, yeah. Um, so that was that was interesting. Um, I forget how pretty it is, you know, in the desert where they have the mountainous landscape, you know, in the back, because all I think about is like just shriveling up and dying in the desert because of the heat. <laughs> You look around it, like Melanie's in, in in Scottsdale, you know, and you get, you're like, oh, I can get the appeal of this on a on a beautiful spring evening. Yes, yes. You won't catch me like here in summer because it's 120 with um, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, scorpions and yes, exactly. And stuff, so we've been in places like that together before. So yes, no, I don't. Right. It's where it's 90 degrees at night. At midnight, it's ninety-one. And degrees. you're sweating. It's not like an oh, it's ninety degrees and everyone's outside having a great time. No, no. yeah, I don't miss that. And but you're and, right. And somebody says to me, James, oh, it's okay. It's a dry heat. <laughs> you're all screw you. You're dry heat. 
I don't have time for that shit. No, the thing is, Palm Springs, there's some yeah. beautiful parts. Yes. Vegas, outside the strip, there's some beautiful, you're right, beautiful parts. Yes. And parts of Arizona and New Mexico, some beautiful parts. You're right. Yeah. It's just the weather. I just, I just not live full time. Visit. No. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's why there are snowbirds. <laughs> right. I get that part because I hate snow too. I'd rather just snow also. Yeah. I like that too. So I get it, yeah. but I couldn't do it full time year round. Okay. No. 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 But you know, there are a lot of people who can and love. I know. So. We do. So I don't think their too. accounts will be changing anytime soon, James. <laughs> I know. It's, well, everything's changing, whether we like it or not. It's all changing. Um, but you can't, a little PSA at home. Still, you know, we, we're coming to an election year. Check out your local elections. Check out your local measures. Check out your local bills and things. Um, yes, president, all that, that's all important. However, comma, as Tony would say, it's the, it's the local stuff. And I mean, I know for a fact that I've, I've been involved in a couple of things here in Inglewood that we actually changed. Um, and it was small, it was a small localized issue. So I just tell people, look at who your mayor is, look at who your district attorney is. Like just seriously, take a little extra time to figure out in your own backyard what's going on because you live there. That's where you live. It's good to be involved a little bit and see what your community is saying. Um, there's next door, there's a couple other apps you can be on. And you know, we have Eye on Inglewood, we have a couple apps today online. So you can find groups and just hear what's going on, just hear what's going on and just keep yourself a little informed of the local stuff. Because maybe you have a chance to change things. Maybe you can save farms and save areas. And mar we have marshland out here in uh, Maria Del Rey that we want to keep. We don't need. We don't need. We don't need more condos on there. I mean, we don't just don't need them. Um, so I just think it's in, just my little my little soapbox on that. Just I think we should look at local stuff. Thank you, James. You're welcome, Alyssa. <laughs> so this is Coffee and Conversation, episode sixty three, with James and Melissa. <laughs> I always go on so much of certain things. I don't care. I, mean, I, I just think it's important um, for us to remember things. We're getting, we're getting older, so we say what we feel. We just say how we feel. We do. We feel. <laughs> Learn out there. So take it. Take it. Um, but also take us with you. If you want to do audio, um, you can go any, any. I mean, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, Spotify, Art Radio, whatever. Look for Coffee and Conversation with James and Melissa. Not Coffee with James and Melissa. Not Coffee with Coffee and Conversation. It's both. With us's. Uh, take us with the yes, it's us's. Oh, my coffee too. It says King. Um, uh, us's. And uh, anywhere. And you can just like, subscribe, comment, you know, rate everything. And then if you want to watch us, because she has beautiful hair, go to YouTube, JLJ Media. We're right there. Um, happy holidays, everybody. And we will talk to you next time.